half of all renters in the U.S., more people than ever are cost burdened, according to a new Harvard University report. That means they're paying more than 30% of their income on rent and utilities. Analysis of 2022 census data revealed that 22 million U.S. renter households are paying a higher share than recommended, and half of those renters spend more than half of their income on housing. Last year, one survey ranked Miami as the least affordable city in the U.S. Residents here struggle to adjust. It's expensive. <laughs> How much are you paying? Uh, just like $1,000 for a small room, and it's not enough space for, you know, just a room? Yeah, it's just a room in somebody's place. Mm -hmm. Rentals are too high. Why do you perceive them as expensive? Because we are paying more than what we make. Real estate agents confirm it. Yes, they are high, but that's driven also by the increase in real estate taxes to all the property owners, the increase in, in insurance. That's also a huge problem that everybody's confronting that. So I've had landlords, uh, clients, investors that have had to raise their rent to good tenants, good paying tenants without necessarily thinking that they were going to. Rent hikes have outpaced income gains. However, the market is giving signs of a cool down. We're starting to see that prices are now starting to come, to come down in the rentals and they're stabilizing. You, when you ask me, are we overpriced? In my opinion, we are not. It's what the market dictates. But that hot housing market has also caused more evictions. And the trickle effect? Homelessness has grown as housing costs went up, reaching a new record of 653,000 unsheltered people in the U.S. at the start of last year. If there's an offset for renters, it's that vacancies are up, which may keep downward pressure on prices. And there's more supply coming in. Almost one million multifamily units, primarily rentals, are currently under construction. Nitsa Soledad Perez, CGTN, Miami. Interesting story, interesting what's going on. Now joining us to talk more about this, Mark Norman. Mark is an associate dean at the NYU Shack Institute of Real Estate. Uh, Mark, welcome to the program. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, I'm sure you had a chance to hear Nitsa's story. Uh, let's talk about this Harvard study. What is out there now that really hasn't been said over and over again, that rent is really ex extremely high right now and it's difficult for people. Yes, it's true. And, you know, this has been a lasting issue in the, in the economy. And at first, you know, the pandemic really had an effect of slowing construction starts, um, but also making people not move, so limiting supply. And now that we've gotten the supply back, we're also hit with some other issues like increased insurance rates um, and also stagnant wages that are kind of having the effect of um, really constraining renters' ability to pay. Yeah, stagnant wages, we've heard about that. That's a, that's a point we want to talk about in a bit. But right now, a record 12 million people spending half, half of their yearly income on rent. We're not talking about people owning, we're talking about rent. How did it get to this point? Well, I mean, it's been a long time coming. If you look back at the 80s, um, wages and rents were a little more balanced, and wages really stagnated, um, while inflation, even relatively low compared to now, um, was increasing rents. And so wages just didn't keep pace uh, with inflation or with the cost of building housing. So in that situation, what you have to do is figure out a way to subsidize more and more renters, whether that be through vouchers or public housing or affordable housing programs. Uh, okay, let's talk about that because you know, we talk about government plans to, uh, to address this. Anytime you talk about subsidizing, you talk about the government offering to lend a hand, put some safety net out there to people who really need it. We know there's a large percentage of people here on Capitol Hill that are going to kick their heels up every time this happens. What sort of plan does the government have to really uh, address what is becoming a crisis? Yeah, I mean, I think there was a notion that you would address it by really the people with the lowest incomes being subsidized in some way so that they could afford their housing. But now that it's expanded to middle income and workforce uh, populations, now, we need a whole host of solutions. And so in the report, um, the Harvard Joint Center report, you see certain jurisdictions doing things like reducing parking requirements or increasing density or giving incentives for building additional housing um, in 
currently low density neighborhoods. You know, and also we, we heard that story about Florida and the problem there is really specific to the Florida in the sense that insurance rates have gone out of control because of all the natural disasters. So I can understand the problem there. But what is the justification by real estate owners behind these high prices when you hear the real estate agent saying market is dictating the price? How do you argue with that? I mean, I don't know that there's much argument for that, except that the market has to also respond to you know, the, the kind of pressures on it. And so what's happening is um, if you were to build at market rate at the price of land and at our current insurance rates, which are elevated, mm -hmm. um, a lower number of people can afford those housing units and we're not increasing supply enough. Um, so really, um, you know, we, we need to increase supply and figure out ways to do that. That'll put downward pressure on rents. Um, but we're still sort of behind in the number of units that we need to build. You know, and uh, let's talk about the argument. You know, it's 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 been easier, been cheaper to rent than to buy. Is 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 that true anymore? Um, you know, it really depends on the jurisdiction, but in large part that is true. Um, but we've had a shift also in who's renting. Um, before it was seen as you know renters were seen as people on their way to home ownership and we're seeing more upper income people choosing to rent wow which has upward pressure on on the rental market and we're also seeing people stay longer in rental housing um, and we're also seeing investors coming in and buying even single family houses and you know uh, renting those as part of their portfolio strategies. Yeah, I want you to expand on that because we think about Airbnb or we think about big corporations coming in, buying these places, uh, putting them up for, for people to rent and making, you know, a king's ransom while a lot of folks are struggling to make ends meet. Yes. Um, well, I mean, one of the things that is really about 10 years old now is you know in the wake of the financial crisis when you had all of those foreclosures, right. you had large funds coming in to buy up the single family portfolios um, from the banks and from other institutions, and you know people weren't in a position to buy, so actually, uh, homes for rent was kind of an affordability strategy. It let you have the leeway. Um, without all of the expense of, you know, having to put down a down payment and take out a mortgage. Um, but that really became an industry. And so that industry, you know, takes up, you know, a, a, not a small percentage of the number of uh, single family houses that, you know, are that would have been for sale. Yeah, and Mark, I also have to think back on before the housing crisis, people were able to go in and, and purchase a home with no money down. But those days are over. So that might be affecting this as well. Yes, and I think we'll see more actually people stay in the rental market um, given where interest rates are. It also actually provides quite a bit of flexibility. So when you think about work from home or, you know, remote work, um, are you going to buy a house with a 30 year mortgage and put that down payment down when you might want that flexibility of, let's say, you know, going to the mountains in the winter and going to Florida in the summer? And having the kind of flexibility, you know, in you know, with your your assets, right? Um, but also with your location. Markets complex issue. We certainly appreciate your insight, uh, and as well, Mark.